Hello everyone, it's time to put one and one together and uh, see if we can uh, do something with uh, all the things that we discussed in the previous videos. Uh, today we're going to try to set up a rubber dam uh, and we're going to try to set it up on the first quadrant. Uh, we're going to pretend that this is uh, an already instrumented tooth. Um, this would be an actual situation if perhaps a broken fragment of the tooth was stuck between the first molar and the second premolar and it wouldn't allow me to place the rubber dam first then i would have to put to make a cavity and then uh, place the rubber dam uh, first things first make sure that you uh, use a sharpie or a marker uh, to uh, mark your rubber dam because if you're going to use a regular ballpoint pen this is going to uh, damage the rubber dam and you might not be able to use it properly uh, that being said um, of course it's going to be a nicktone rubber dam I have one that's already been marked and perforated I perforated it um, by using the second largest punch hole this one for the second molar the same hole for the first molar and then I went to the third hole in order to obtain holes for the uh, two premolars and my canine and you're going to ask why I decided to go so far with the isolation I usually do this in the office if I'm going to work on a single molar I'm um, most likely going to isolate an entire quadrant and then some uh, this is good practice first of all uh, we are going to use the 27N clamp and we are going to use a parachute technique meaning that we're going to take the connector of the clamp and put it through the last hole like this and then we're going to take the rubber dam over and we're going to take our pliers and gently extend the jaws and we're going to go to our second molar like this and allow the clamp to bite then remove the pliers from the clamp and now what you want to do first is to take the rubber dam over the rubber dam clamp don't mind anything else just take the rubber dam over the rubber dam clamp like this this is your first step towards isolation now what you'd like to do because this is a heavy rubber dam you want to make sure that it goes in the spaces between the teeth but it doesn't uh, gets forced through because then you might tear the rubber dam so how are we going to do this? We are going to place one side of the hole in the space, like this. And then we are going to use some floss to gently take the rubber dam through. I like using this floss because it's quite thick. You can find it in any pharmacy get a nice long fragment and then I'm not going to try to force too much rubber dam in at a time I'm going to go in gently then I'm going to make a loop go through again make another loop go through again and now I can take my rubber dam over the remaining tooth structure like this and now by pulling one side it's going to come out like this it should be easy enough to go through the next space between the first molar and the premolar because I already have a prepared tooth and then I'm going to go over the canine and just make a nice flossing motion of the canine so the rubber dam goes through completely now you see 
the rubber dam seems to be crumpled here and there. I don't want this. This is not going to provide proper isolation. What I want to do is use my floss again and I'm going to go around each tooth like this. And as you can see, it invaginates the rubber dam rapidly. You can use a probe to do this. And now, if you'd like to, you can use a W2 rubber dam clamp in order to stabilize the rubber dam easily. You can put it on the canine or you can put it on the premolar, however you like. Another thing, please have a look here behind my last molar. You can see the rubber dam isn't properly seated there. I just gently pick up the rubber dam, clamp towards the palatal, and then do the same towards the buccal. And now it's perfectly seated there as well. Now you're going to be able to sit your rubber dam on this you can first stretch it partially and then you can reseat it so that it uh, allows you to have a nice straight rubber dam and this is going to be quite, quite stable, as you can see. I'm not able to pull it off. I'm not sure any of your patients can exert this much force on your rubber dam. It's not going to give away. And since I'm not happy with the way the rubber dam is seated around the teeth, I can use a metal probe and you can just gently go around your tooth and this is going to cause the rubber dam to invaginate immediately and if your rubber dam is invaginated properly it's not going to allow any sort of marginal leakage if you fail to do this well you still have some isolation it's not going to be perfect so i really uh, insist that you take the time to do this and now you can see that my working field really is something else i'm now ready to prepare my adhesive protocol. See you soon.